Hey, how's it going and welcome along. I'm Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome to today's video. This is a little bit different from normal. I'm not in the office like I usually am. Instead, I'm in the house and this is part of my new extension that I've built on the side of the house, which is my new room kind of cinema area TV kind of thing. I've got my beautiful new TV, which I'm so, so pleased with. This is the 65 inch LG C2 and my God, this is an amazing TV. It's such a good TV. But on my old setup with my old TV, I had LED tape all stuck to the back of the TV and it used to glow out from the TV and it looked really cool. Now you may or may not have seen before, I did a video where I created a mounting system for the acoustic foam that I've got in my office and I ran LED tape around that. And I had the idea that this would actually be rather good behind a TV. So I adapted the system a little and I've made it so that it can work on different size TVs. And it's available from my little Etsy shop if you wanted one yourself. So, today I'm gonna to take the TV off the wall, I'm gonna put the frame around, I'm gonna mount some LED tape on it, I'm gonna use one of my little Simplux boxes to drive the LEDs, and we're gonna make this all glow up and look super cool and super swish. But first, I've gotta get this TV off the wall. I'm on my own, but I'm filming, so at least if I drop it and break it, we've got it on video. Let's begin. The TV is off the wall and luckily I didn't drop it and break it, thank goodness for that. But I thought I'd share with you what I've got going on here. So while this was being done, I ran in a, uh, a channel so that I could run all the cabling and everything down so that I can have no visible wires and no trunking or anything like that. Then we've got the mount there and then I've mounted a, a power bar because those TVs, the plug on them, isn't removable. So I could not get the plug through there. And I had a look around and it was proving to be an absolute nightmare. So it's actually plugged in directly behind itself. I've just realized I forgot to do a really important step. Right, so it's just occurred to me, before I actually took the TV down off the wall, I meant to mark where the four corners were so that I knew the size I was aiming for. Now my, my shape, my pieces I've got are the right size, but I need those so that I've got reference points to make sure that I'm central. So I'm gonna have to put this back up on the wall again. <laughs> right, TV's back on the wall. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape the wall in all of the corners with some masking tape to help me know exactly where the TV sits. I've got it centrally lined up again, but while I was here, I was gonna mention, this is my PlayStation 2 VR wall mount. So the solution here is it's a easy to use wall mount, put the, put the PlayStation headset on. It's got this shield here so the dust and sunlight doesn't get into the, into the lens. So in case you want one of these, description's in the link. Links in the description. Right, that's all four corners marked. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, it's just to give me an idea so that I can work out where the center is. And here we go again. Okay, so what I've done is I've got my laser level here set up and I've got that running along my top line. It's also in line with my screw here. So I know that that is the very, very tippy top of the TV. So I can put a little mark there and that is all good. And the very bottom of the TV is somewhere around about here. I've got my, my two points. I just need to measure a specific distance. So my frame is 700. So I need to basically get 700 in between these two points. So it's actually seven, 71 centimeters. By eyeballing it, it looks like it's about there. So I'm gonna come down this much, and that is where my first piece is gonna go. Right, now my set of pieces, uh, they're all individually in here in this box. Let's quickly flash to a drawing of kind of how they all go together. So what I've done is I've numbered each piece. You can see the sixes go in the middle, top and bottom position. Then it's fours, and then it's ones for the corners. Now all I need to do is get these out and figure out which ones are which. So obviously I haven't actually spoken much about what the actual thing is yet. So this is the way the frame works and it's made up of all these individual pieces and they've all got little holes in. The idea being that you thread some filament into these and that creates a way of connecting them together. And then when you put them up on the wall, it all holds itself and it gives you this channel you see for the LED tape to run. 
and the, the six pieces have these two extra little holes to allow you an, an in and an out for your wiring for your LED tape. And you can also mount them either via the screw holes and you can screw them to the wall or you can just stick the uh, sticky pad to the back, stick it on the wall. And that's how we're gonna do it today. So let me just show you what I mean by this. So I've put two bits of filament in the end of that and then they go together and you just push them together. And that allows you to just guide it all in as you go around building your piece on the wall. Pretty simple, but it does the job. So I'll just start off with the six piece. It's gonna go there. I'll use this little spirit level just to keep it uh, neat and tidy. And let's attach one of these. So I'll attach my sticky pad to the back, like so. Unpeel it. Right, this is good to go. So I wanna make sure that that six is in line. Right, first bit up. Now I've just gotta go around and do all the rest. Now according to my instructions, it goes six, four, four, one. So I need two four pieces, connect them, get them on, and then I'll start working my way down. As long as I come out from this point, it should tie up perfectly. <laughs> top line done it doesn't look entirely straight I grant you that but in all fairness it doesn't actually matter for what this will do this will be fine but now that I have stood back and looked at it definitely I've gone up a bit <laughs> I don't know why that is whatever we carry on it's fine it's fine I've never known one like it but the, the bubble in my spirit level is really slow Oh, it's really annoying, it takes ages for it to adjust. <laughs> So even though this is my own design, I've made a small boo-boo here and I've forgotten to install the uh, extender pieces that go in up the top here. They're just these little pieces and all they do is they just make it so it's a touch deeper to, to reach all the way down to the bottom of the TV area. I am going to find a way to put these in, both of them here and then carry on from there. But really they should be sitting in up here. But never mind, Shh, don't tell anyone. It's fine, it's fine. But I will make the instructions a little bit more clear. And as if by magic, we have a double extender piece. No problem, it goes in here. It goes in like that, no one will ever know. Perfect. Now the tricky bit, it's the very final piece. So I'm hoping this should all connect up nicely. Push this side in, and then we might just need to flex it a bit. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's just make sure that it's straight with our slow motion bubble. Right there. And boom, there we go. We have our frame, it's in place. We're now ready to do LED tape and get that all around it. Let's see what happens. I've just run my cable, so I've got my three wires that are running now down my channel to under here so that I can put the power supply and the SIM plug box all down here out of the way. And I can have that on a smart plug, meaning I can turn it on and off through the Philips Hue system, through the tablet on the wall, however I want to do it. LED tape. So this is the WS2812 Smart LED Tape and the point of this tape specifically is that each LED is individually addressable, which means you can have different colours running at different areas. And my little Simplex box that I have is what enables me to control that really, really easily. And it allows me to even convert this into a, a Philips Amberlight style system where it mimics the colours on the edge of the TV and projects those onto the wall if I run it through a little Raspberry Pi, a little converter and stuff like that. I won't be looking at that in this video. I might look at doing it in the future, but for now I just want to get the LED tape on there. It comes with sticky. I've often found that this sticky is no good. It doesn't last very long, so I, I often I use a hot glue gun to uh, just finish it off. Just a few little dabs here and there, just holds it all in place. And also hot glue is really non-destructive if you find you've done something where you peel it off and you start again. It's really good. So let's get this wrapped around this thing here. Important point that actually I should mention that I forgot just a minute ago. This is the 60 LEDs per meter and this is five meters of it. So there's a lot of LEDs here. This should give me a really nice glow. Finally, also remember, there's a direction to this. Easiest way to tell is this connector that is the male, 
versus this one that is the female. This is the starting point, so it will head off in this direction. Actually, I'll tell you what, maybe you can answer this. That to me looks like that makes that the male one here, but in actual fact, the pins are in this one. So is it actually that this is the male? Either way, it's this one <laughs> that's the starting point in the chain. And I'm gonna now cut this off so that I can poke the wires through to get. Obviously, I've got more tape than I need, so I'm going to find the longest point I can, which is about here, and I'm going to cut the tape there with my handy snips. And that's actually worked really well. I've hardly used any hot glue. It's, it's actually stuck pretty well. Normally, it might start drooping, but to be honest, because it's all stuck really well there and there, the bottom, there's not there's no room for it to droop. There's no kind of spare. So I, I think that will hold perfectly fine. And to me, that's looking rather good. So now I've just got to get this cable connected to this cable, and then I'll connect it all down the bottom, and we'll light it up and see what it looks like. To be fair, normally I would solder this and heat shrink and spend a bit of time with it, but today I'm gonna to cheat and use Wagos, just because for, for this, that's fine. Perfect. Right now, I could wire it up and test it while it's still like this. But I'm thinking, should I get the TV on first? Mm, decisions, decisions. No, let's test it and make sure it works. When I talk about Simplux Box, this is what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on it, but basically, this is a Node MCU board with a case that I've designed and created to make it super easy to wire up these LED lights. All you have to do is connect the lights into this side using that same kind of connector that we saw earlier, and then you put power into this side. Five volts. Job's done. That's it. Now you've got a Wi-Fi controlled piece of LED tape that can go as long as you can enjoy inject power for. In this case, I'm running the power straight into the LEDs. I'm not using the injection wires. I'm just powering it through this. So like I say, what this does is it gives you a super, super easy way to power and drive these LEDs through your Wi-Fi, through your phone, even through a smart system, whatever. Really, really easy way. Now I do sell these on my shop. Feel free, go have a look if you want. I'm always happy to answer any questions. Chuck them in the comments. Little tip for you. This is the smart plug that you get from Lidl, and these are around about six pounds. They work with Philips Hue. Philips Hue will see it as a light bulb. So I bought a ton of these, and now loads of stuff in the house is all controlled through Philips Hue, uh, which allows me to do scenes and sequences and all sorts, and link things together so when this comes on, it also turns on this plug and so on. Just using these Lidl smart plugs, they are absolutely brilliant. Right, so the connections I have on these two wires here, a little six amp, five volt PSU. They go straight into the two connectors in here, positive into the positive, the negative into the negative. That's ready to be powered on now. In this end is the, uh, the wires that go up to the LED tape up here, and I've just used a Wago to put one of those connectors on. That just connects in like that. That is now done. Now one thing I will say is, before playing with electricity, if you don't know what you're doing, make sure you consult an electrical person of cleverness. Don't go taking chances, it's not worth the risk. So now I'm going to hit the power button and turn it on and see what it does. Lights are here, and we have lights up there. Now you might notice that it's only a few, and the reason is because I've already used this Simplex box, probably for some Christmas lights or something like that, and it doesn't know how many LEDs are here. So I just need to connect to it on the app on my phone and tell it there are a few more LEDs here. Okay, so just quickly I'll show you here. This is that one up there. It's currently called Snowflake. If I come into effects and make it go solid, you'll see it's now gone solid. I just need to go through all the configuration and tell it how many LEDs. This is thinking there are 48. There isn't, there's a lot more than that. So it's pretty easy to work out anyway, because I had a roll that had 300 LEDs on it. I cut off the end. 48 gives me 793 LED. No, that's not right. 252, I think it is. So I've set 252, I'm gonna hit save, and boom, we now have all of them lit. Now at the moment, the app is currently restricting the ampage. It's only using 0.8 of an amp. So I'm just gonna up that a little bit to two amps just for now. That's made it a little bit brighter. 
and we can tweak. I've got six amps sitting in that PSU. We can tweak it, make it work for us. But as you can see, that's a nice clean glow. I can come in here and I can change that color and I can do what I want with it. Even more interesting, I can do different things. I can make different things happen. I can make animations and, or do crazy weird stuff like that, you see. And that's the benefit of this LED tape. But anyway, that's enough playing around. Let's get the TV back on the wall. This is where two people would be really handy. And there we go. Oh, what a job. Wasn't actually too bad. Now it's on there. My TV's not damaged. There's nothing stuck to it. Everything's wall side. I can change bits out if need be. It's actually quite easy and straightforward to do. My Simplex box is in and it's driving the whole thing. It's all controlled through my phone. Now I'm gonna dim the lights in here and turn that on. Okay, ready and go. Hey, there we go. So we have now got a nice glow coming out from all around the TV. It looks really slick. I think obviously the room's still quite bright at the moment. So once this kind of becomes evening, night time, this is gonna look super, super slick. So now if I change it to a nice cool blue color, that's looking great. That looks really, really stunning. And I can't wait for this to be nighttime and uh, have a look at what it looks like once it's all dark in here. So there you go, I do hope you enjoyed this. This was a fun little project. I enjoyed putting this together. If you are interested in this mounting system, it's available on my Etsy shop. The link is in the description. Go and have a look. I've included all the common TV sizes in there and I've made it so you just buy the size you want and I'll send you the right number of pieces. You just put it together up on the wall. And yeah, and of course, if you did enjoy this video, please remember, hit that like button for me. And if you subscribe, hit the little bell so that you get notified when I put up a new video. I'll do a video covering the Simplux box at some point. I'll probably do one converting this into a Amberlight style setup. Plus also I do all my, my 3D printer reviews and stuff and you never know, I might even have a new Ragdoll video coming very soon. Thanks once again for joining me. Don't forget to check out the description. I love you all. Cheers. Bye for now.